name is Brandon Yoder. I'm with Cornell Pump. And today we're going to go over the installation of a FlowServe ISC S cartridge seal into a 3RB hot oil pump. First we're going to go through and put the quench and drain plumbing on the seal prior to installation. Then we're going to put the seal onto the shaft. Then we're going to start our back plate. So now we're going to put our quench and our drain fittings into the seal cartridge before we install it onto the frame. So we're going to carefully put it in the bench vise, make, taking care not to pinch the Teflon gasket on the bottom. Use a little bit of thread sealant and Teflon tape. We'll put an elbow on top. We want the drain and the quench to come in from the same side. Um, looking at the pump, we're going to be have it go out the left side. And then you just tighten this up the same as you would any other NPT fitting. Just tighten it up till it's snug. For our purposes, because we're not installing it in a system, we're just going to put a plug in there so that no debris gets inside that fitting. Now the F stands for product flush. So we're going to start by putting in a bushing. And then our um, compression fitting for the flush line. We want our flush, our drain and quench fittings to be opposite the flush line. So we're going to turn this a little bit further. If you, if you get the MPT in the wrong position, you always want to tighten. You don't want to loosen it. If you have to loosen it, take it back out and reapply your sealant. We'll install the drain fitting facing the same direction as the quench. So now that we have our fittings set, we can go ahead and get ready to put this into the pump. So with your seal, you'll get a little bag with a allen key and some lubricant. This allen key is what you need to adjust the set screws and take the, remove the keepers. We find it a little bit easier to use a quarter inch ratchet with some hex bits. I'm going to start with just loosening these keepers. I don't want to remove them because I don't want the seal to reset. I just want to loosen them so that when I go to take them off later, it's a little bit easier. So I'm just backing them off and then making them hand tight. The next step is to make sure that all these set screws are backed off so they're not protruding through the bore. And that's just so that this cartridge seal will slide over the shaft and won't get caught on those. So now we're going to go ahead and put our seal onto the pump itself. We're going to start by making sure that the shaft has no burrs and everything is clean and smooth. There's no gouges or nicks for that o-ring to get cut on. This is a customer return that we're doing a conversion on. This was a standard 609 seal. We're converting it to a cartridge seal. Uh, that kit will include new bearings, the new shaft, and all the seals and um, lip seals to be able to refurbish the frame. It will also include a back plate and a wear ring for the back plate as, long, as well as the cartridge seal itself. We're going to start by just test fitting the seal to make sure it slides over the shaft easily. And the cap on this flush line hitting the bracket. We'll take that off. So I can get all the way up to the O-ring 
without any resistance, so that's good. So now we'll take our lubricant, twist the top off. Apply a little bit to the shaft itself. Then we're going to go ahead and apply some straight to the O-ring itself. Make sure you lubricate that front chamfer so that the O-ring can slide over it easily. Make sure we pay attention to which one's the drain, which one's the quench, because we need the drain to be at the bottom. So you slide that all the way forward. And now we're going to install our back plate before we do anything else with the seal. Typically we're going to have our balance line fitting come out our left side, the same as the flush line. We're going to go ahead and fit that onto the pump. We're going to fasten the cartridge seal up to the face of the back plate. Take your bolts with your washers. And we're going to line up the seal with the threads. And we're going to make them all hand tight to start with. So now that we have the seal hand tight up against the back plate, we're going to tighten it down. You need to be careful not to just tighten one side down and go to the other. There is a boss where that Teflon seal rides, and we need to make sure that we don't over tighten one side and kick that seal to, to the edge. We need to make sure that seal comes down flat up against the back plate. So we're just going to start by tightening it up a little bit at a time. The idea is just to make sure that seal rests flat against the face of the back plate. Just going back and forth until I get a good even pressure on all the bolts. And once I have it where the, all the bolts are about the same, I'll go around and snug them all down. It's important not to over tighten them because you don't want to bend that cartridge. So referring to the gland bolts in the flow serve installation manual, for this seal size we're looking at 15 foot pounds or 20 newton meters on those four bolts that hold the gland to the back plate. When we go to the set screws next, we're going to be looking at tightening down to 40 inch pounds or four and a half newton meters. Okay, so we use a quarter inch ratchet over the tool provided just to make sure that set screw gets a good bite into the shaft. So you'll notice when you're tightening up these set screws, you're gonna have some that are smaller. And those are part of the seal assembly itself. And you're not gonna to touch those. Those are not part of the assembly for the pump. I have one down here that I can't really get to to tighten it. So now that I have the other three already tied, I'm going to go ahead and take these keepers off so that I can rotate the shaft slightly and get to that last set screw. You just want to make sure that the other three are tight before you remove any of the keepers. And these are those keepers that I'm talking about. This is just designed to hold that seal separated at the correct spacing. It's a good idea to hang on to those keepers after your seal installation so that if you have any troubleshooting you have to do, you can always fit one of those in there and make sure that your seal is still maintaining the correct spacing. So there's all four keepers removed. I'm gonna rotate the shaft slightly and finish tightening up my set screw. Now I'm just gonna go around and make sure all four set screws are tight. So now that we've finished tightening up our set screws, the seal assembly is finished. We'll go ahead and put our compression fitting back on the top of this flush port. The next step in the assembly would be to install the impeller and 
assemble all of the flush lines and the volute and everything that goes on with the rest of the pump. 